Hello world, Cozzy here with another Geek Movie Review. This time, this review is going to be magical. Not because I'm going to talk about Harry Potter. No, anyone who knows me knows I've not seen any of those movies and I've not read any of the books, so why on earth would I start with the last one? No, instead, I'm going to talk about a movie that was made on a budget of just $3 million, that is, not by a major studio, started off as a mock trailer to another movie and is only on limited release in the UK and that movie is Hobo with a Shotgun. Now Hobo with a Shotgun, what can I say about it? Well uh, it's a bit of a Marmite movie. Um, you're gonna love it or you're gonna hate it. Now I personally thought this movie was great. Um, it's a movie that will appeal to, and I'm not being sexist, guys mainly uh, those who like ultraviolence, um, anyone that like grew up like me watching the, the fantastic independence movie scene from the sort of 1980s, early 1990s, especially trauma films, stuff like uh, the Toxic Avenger, um, brilliant, uh, class, oh, Class of Newcomb High, those kind of things, those kind of films. If you like those kind of films, if like me, you grew up watching them on late night satellite TV, then you're going to love Hobo with a Shotgun. If you don't like that, what I've just explained and described, then this movie is pretty much going to be a waste of your time. Um, don't go and see it if you're not into gore, ultra-violence, um, low-budget movies that hark back to the similar vein of the, the movies in the 1980s and early 1990s. So, yeah, so it's a, it's a, it's a dull review if you're like me. It's a four or five star movie. If you're not, it's going to be pretty awful. Um, but I'm going to talk about, a little bit about why that is. Moving straight on to a bit of the history about this film. As I mentioned earlier, it starts off as, as a mock trailer. Um, a mock trailer that won um, a competition in South by Southwest that was run by Roberto Rodriguez. And it was a mock trailer for the movie Grindhouse, which is, if you know anything about that movie, was split in, into two movies, a segment by... Rodriguez is called Planet Terror and a segment by Quentin Tarantino which is called Death Proof and in between they had lots of mock trailers. This trailer specifically was on the Canadian prints of the movie. Um, I don't think it was in many of the US or, or European prints but it received such a big response in the same way that Machete did uh, which was also a mock trailer for this movie that um, they both got made into, into their own features Machete, obviously, with a, a higher budget. Um, but, yeah, so the, the, the maker of, of the original trailer, Jason Eisner, gets to direct this movie. Uh, obviously, he had a vision for it. Uh, he didn't write the, the whole script, although the original idea and concepts are, are his. Uh, and the guy who played the, the hobo in the original trailer gets to play a corrupt cop in the actual movie, which was nice. I thought it was a, uh, a nice way of saying thank you to, to that actor who obviously portrayed the character well in the trailer, the original mock trailer for this movie that wasn't meant to be made. So, yeah, that was good. Um, plot. Okay, so this is a strange plot. I'm only going to explain roughly because I think you should go and sort of see it for yourselves. So, the plot revolves around a hobo played by Rutger Hauer. That's right, Rutger Hauer. <laughs> How can this movie gone wrong already? It's got Rutger Hauer in it. I've just said it three times. Here's a fourth, Rutger Hauer. Anyway, so this hobo moves to this small town uh, in hopes of starting a lawn mowing business. Yeah, I know that sounds like a strange concept, but bear with me. When he gets to the town, it's run by a corrupt businessman who is also a criminal called the Duke and his two sons who are terrorizing the town and basically running it through fear uh, and uh, criminal activities. He joins up with a prostitute called Abby and together they go to sort of seek retribution against the, the Duke and his family for what they're doing, not only to, to the hobo himself and to Abby, but also to the whole town as, uh, as a whole. So that's the basic plot of the movie. Um, for this type of movie, it's what you'd expect. It's sort of action, garbage, uh, low-budget fodder that you would expect from these types of films. But it does very much like the trauma movies of the 1980s. Seem to have an inbuilt message as well. The message talks a little bit about 
I would say, sort of statements about corruption, about the erosion of moral standards, and urban degradation and decay. So it doesn't sort of harp on about it, but they're, they're the angles that it's going for for its inbuilt message based around the ultraviolence and action um, that you see throughout the whole of the movie. Uh, talking about the acting a little bit, I've, I've already mentioned Rutger Hauer. Rutger Hauer is fantastic in this movie. This is probably the best movie I've seen him in for a very, very long time. I can't even think of the last great film um, role that Rucker Howard was in. This this is fantastic for him. He probably gives a better performance than, than is even needed in, in the title role. Um, it's just fantastic. Well done to Rutger Howard for that because, yeah, I know he can act. People who've seen his movies in the past know he can act and this really does prove what you know, uh, what acting chops he's got, so fantastic for Rutger Hauer. Um, if I was going to pick one moment throughout the whole film to talk about how good he was, there is a monologue scene in a hospital where he's talking to some babies. Uh, that entire scene is brilliant and it steals the movie. Just, just how good he is in that one scene steals everything else that every other actor puts in. Um, that's just how good he is. Uh, notice um, as well that Brian Downey, who who plays the main villain, the Duke, he's brilliant. He he's a great villain. Um, there's nothing likable about this character, and he portrays that perfectly. Uh, he um, comes across as genuinely twisted and sadistic, uh, almost sociopathic in some of the things he does, and uh, it's brilliant. Yeah, he's really good. I I thought he he was perfect casting for that role. Someone else who was good was the actress who played um, the the prostitute Abby and her name is Molly Dunsworth. Now this is her first star role in a feature film. Um, she comes from, from acting family because her, her dad is actually in Trailer Park Boys, the, the TV series. Some of you may have seen it, it's a Canadian comedy series. Uh, so you know, she comes from an acting family but this is her first ever starring role and uh, she's only 21, but she's brilliant. She she really does come across well, um, portrays the character well, makes you sort of um, feel for the character. You know, she's it's the classic sort of you know tart with the heart, is is what people would say. But yeah, she she does well. I thought she was a good actress. I think she's she's got a bright future, one to look out for. So I mean, her name's Molly Dunsworth. She's a Canadian actress. Look out for her. Uh, if there's anything to go by, she's gonna have a, a great career. Um, supporting actors are all, are all fine. Some of them obviously come across as a, a little bit cheesy B mover act actors, but that's what the film's going for. So it doesn't take anything away from the good performances and, and the absolutely amazing performance of the the leading man. So great, all good on on the casting front. Um, look and feel of the movie mentioned about the the trauma thing um, that. Yeah, it feels like an indie low budget movie from from the 80s and 90s. There's there's lots of gore, lots of ultra violence, lots of colour, um, lots of urban grime and, and decay and and the whole look and feel adds to that sort of indie 80s, 90s, you know, get it from the video store. Um, for those people who don't know what a video store is, these are like places you used to go to and they had these cassettes, they were called, but in fact, this is a cassette, guys. Um, used to go there, used to get these cassettes, speak to an actual person, bring it home, put it into this thing called a VHS player, watch the movie, take it back as quickly as possible. Kind of like a library, uh, but for movies. Um, <laughs> sarcasm alert over. Uh, so yeah, what can I say about this movie? It's, as I said at the start, if you're like me and you grew up on this kind of stuff and you're into the low-budget, ultra-violence, gore, but with a message, movies, then it's fantastic. Go and watch it. And you know, go to Manchester, actually travel away from where you live and watch this movie. Um, or wait for the DVD, which will be released on the 1st of August, and go and buy it. If you're not that way inclined when it comes to these types of movies, then it's going to be a one star movie. You're not going to like it. You're going to find this disgusting and probably terribly made. Don't see it. That's all I can pretty much say about this. Um, as always, down there is a like button. If you like this, click on it, subscribe, favourite, comment, 
paste this on the million and one sites that you go on that your friends look at so that more people get to watch this movie review and uh, I'll be back soon with some more movie reviews and some more geek movie news until next time au revoir